Hello, hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Fed by Farmers podcast with me, Cami Wilson, and me, Iona Murray. In case you didn't realise that wasn't Iona's voice, she's actually in Thailand this week, so it's just myself bringing you the introduction for this one. We are hoping to have a midweek podcast with Iona live from Thailand, ready for you on Thursday. But for this week's podcast, it's Hamish Mitchell. For anyone who doesn't know, Hamish is a multiple-time Scottish Sheeran champion. He is a former world team champion for Scotland and has done just about everything in the, the, the Shearing world. He is an absolute legend, certainly a, a hero to, to myself, and you'll tell that in this podcast. There is a little bit of fanboying going on. I get very giddy and excited. I talk even faster than normal, and there may be some shearing terms and references, and certainly names being mentioned, that you don't know. But what I will say is we get into... Some really great stuff from his early life, getting into shearing, what drives him, and, and I think it's applicable to many of us in life. And we also talk about real strife that hit Hamish when he had a, a major medical incident and he died a couple of times on an operating table and was resurrected like the Terminator that he is. No sponsor for this week's podcast because I haven't got organised enough with being away. I'm currently in Germany, in case anyone notices a difference in the audio quality. If you're watching on YouTube, I am currently in my room in Germany. We are scanning some sheep here this week and we'll be back to normal next week. I'd just like to make you aware that if you would like to support the podcast, please do jump on to fedbyfarmers.co.uk and check out the incredible range of clothing we have on there, all custom-made for Fed by Farmers, uh, we're hoping to make this into a brand that really spreads positivity about farming and helps support everything we're doing in the media world to promote farming. Thanks for listening again. Thanks for all the positive feedback from last week's interview with John Murray. Incredible. But that's enough from me. Let's hear from Hamish. Okay, and here we are. This this is exciting. Exciting for me, certainly. Iona, who isn't a shearer. No. Um and probably doesn't really know who Hamish is that well. No, I don't. Won't be as excited, but here he is, Hamish Mitchell. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, you out your comfort zone here? Aye, a wee bit. It's nice but to I'll, see. I'll, f- I'll fall into it in a second. Aye, it's nice. Yeah. Aye, you adapt quickly. Aye. Is that fair to say? Once we get a beer. Yeah, so for people, well, I know that's actually that's a poor <laughs> show, isn't it? <laughs> like a couple of shearers here doing a podcast, we don't even have a beer. Very All good right. point, but we're professionals, uh, so we'll keep it sober. Tell us who is, for people that don't know, who is Hamish Mitchell? Young fella that grew up on the west coast of Scotland, got addicted on sheep shearing, travelled the world, been in 22 countries shearing, and now I'm back in Scotland, full-time farming. Did you grow up on a farm? Yep, grew up. Uh, my father had agricultural contract and business, and he had trucks as well when I was wee. And then I was too young to drive the trucks and I hated driving a tractor so I would go doing lambings and gathering. Mm. I worked for Morden Research Institute for a year and a half out in America eh, when I was 18 and the shearers came in eh, to shear and eh, they wanted me to go back to America and I says no I'm going to New Zealand to learn to shear. So that's what happened. I gave up my opportunity with Morden Research Institute Okay. Went shearing. And they're based out in America as well? No, nah, I was 18 year old and I was sent out there as an advisor. On their behalf? So either, they're based in Edinburgh behalf. more than, aren't they? And, and, right, okay, and you were sent out. Okay. And, um, fantastic opportunities to a young young fella. And they, they gave me other opportunities around, but no, nah, I wanted to go shearing. I learned to shear when I was six, 15, I must have been, eh, because you had to be 16 to be in a wool board course and my brother and all his pals were on this course and I just hung around watching and listening all day and they wouldn't let me go on on the (laughs) shearing course. (laughs) But on the Sunday afternoon, there was still a few hundred sheep to shear and they hung up another machine and I would have shorn more sheep on the Sunday afternoon than than they did. Is that right? Aye. So so have you always been um, mentally quite strong, would be one way to put it, but... Like, you've always been competitive? Very competitive, yeah, yeah, all my life. Me and my brother would be 
fighting about everything. Yeah. But uh, no, probably oh, my father, he, it was him that pointed us in this direction, pointed me in this direction, you know, and bought me a shearing machine and a handpiece and, you know, I was only young, young. Mm -hmm. Was he a shearer? He always sure, but uh, and he sure sheep last, he's 80 plus years and he's sure his own sheep last year himself. Still in the go. <laughs> oh, that's uh, a great uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So, uh, many years he didn't shear, but he, mm -hmm. he, he, when he was younger, bef when I was a wee boy, I knew he went away uh, working on hill farms and they did the shearing and that. Yeah, and everyone mucked in back in uh, sort of uh, good old days, if you like, where it was a big community thing and yeah. everyone get together. So you, you had that bug from a young age and, and you took this chance to go to New Zealand at 18. How how did that go? Aye, uh, it was, uh, i never been abroad apart from being in America and that was all, everything was organised and mm -hmm. going down to New Zealand and wore the kilt when I was on my way there. I'd been at a wedding <laughs> via Hawaii and got stranded there for 10 days. God, that sounds terrible. That was unreal. <laughs> <laughs> Landed in New Zealand, hitchhiked down the road and got a job and I started cheering. I, I take it you had the job sort of lined up before you got there? No. No, not at all. Just, just flew to New Zealand. <laughs> flew to New Zealand had a handpiece and ten cutters and twenty five, <laughs> uh, twenty five cutters, ten combs and a hand Lister handpiece and yep. Met up with a fantastic guy called Steve Cottrell uh, in Hawke's Bay, uh, and he gave me the start. If we could do three hundred on the Saturday and Sunday between us, I would have a job on the Monday. So <laughs> he did the first hour and. I didn't have to do so many in the second hour, but yeah, it wasn't easy. No, because at that point you're still a, a learner, basically. I had done still a, ju a junior. I take it done two fifty in this country. Yeah, mm -hmm. but go down there and you're a nobody. You know, you mm. it's uh, very very different. So he must have saw that I was there to mean business, and and they gave me the opportunity to start Monday morning. And that was your first, so that was, a, who was that with? Steve Cottrell. Steve Cottrell. Okay. Passed, passed away now, the man, so, yeah. And so from there, made a bit of money? I had no money when I got there, so I must have made money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd spent it all in Hawaii. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like we need to know more about Hawaii. I, we I, glossed I, well, over who, those well, 10 yeah, days. Yeah, who would you know that's getting married in Hawaii? No, no, uh, uh, you're way offline. I was at a wedding in Calendar. <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and I still had my kilt on when I got to Hawaii. <laughs> All right. All right, okay, sorry. So, but, then, but then with the flight, the problem with the flight, she ended up doing ten days there. Is that what happened? I just oh, so it's not that exciting, <laughs> right? No. I thought it's like, how could a man from? Nah, well, uh, are you from Sky? Or you, if you, you know, Dai's always gone the lanky loon from Sky. Are you actually from Sky? Uh, no, I uh, Portman Teeth, uh, just outside Stirling, is where I was born. And right, okay, born, but okay. I got brought up on Sky, and then my parents moved up there when I was still at school. So that's where the the lanky loon from Sky thing. So <laughs> my younger life was. Working life was on Sky. Sorry, I'm not quite done with Hawaii yet. What did you do for those 10 days? Oh, gee whiz. There's always one person that asks <laughs> these questions. <laughs> like, <laughs> like things that young Scotsmen and kilts do. Aye. No, it was just met up with a couple of really nice people uh, on the airplane. They had been in school or whatever you call it in America, university or school, mm -hmm. because it's American and they were going home for the holidays. Mm-hmm. And they had jokingly said, oh, just come and stay with us and we'll show you around. So that's what I ended up doing. It was fantastic. Were you phased by that? Because obviously going abroad at that age, you'd be nerve-wracking. No, no. I'd been in America and and America was daunting, you know, they carried guns. Everything's and, big mm. and the, the in your face. tractor man that worked for us, he had just got out of jail for murdering his wife. And so you had, you know, wow. seen everything and... Or you thought you'd seen everything. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, Hawaii would be a lot more laid back and chilled. Oh, yeah. it'd be a lot more like Sky. It'd be more like the American version of Sky uh, off the West Coast. I was more like I, was, I was spoiled. I was spoiled. I yeah. met lovely people and I was just spoiled. Yeah. So, uh, so so you did your first season in New Zealand? Yep. And that's your shearer now? No. You've decided no. I'm a shearer now? I'm pretty much, I'm still hoping that I'm going to be a shearer. Okay. <laughs> But, and then went just back home though, into a lamb and then into uh, the summer season? No, I, I stayed, I stayed, uh, I stayed and came back probably in, 
just before we would start shearing here. It would be May before I came back that first year. Right. Uh, no mobile telephones or anything back then, you know. It was maybe went three months without calling my mum and my dad to tell them where I was and got a bit of a growling for that. <laughs> You're just having so much fun. Aye. Yeah. I, and no mobile phones or... Yeah, I suppose uh, things are a lot simpler and, mm -hmm. you know, it is actually nice to think back about those. Even I'm old, young, old enough, young enough, old enough to remember no mobile, mobile phones. Even though the year you went there was the year I was born, I must say. <laughs> um, but, so speaking about that, this first season, you're obviously renowned and very famous for the competition, Sheeran. Did you do any competitions that first year? Uh, yeah. But did, were you, from the very start, love the competitions? Desperate to do well in them? Yeah. Uh, everyone was at 100 mile an hour. I wanted to be at the top yesterday, and, and mm -hmm. there was only one way of doing that was get stuck in. I can't remember if I had done a season... My first Highland show, I was eliminated in the in three events in the one weekend. Okay, <laughs> uh, for being too fast, you know, it just it's rough. It must have been. Yeah, I wasn't cutting them, but just mm. wasn't good enough. Yeah. Uh, so then it soon showed me, uh, and then in New Zealand, I w I, there was no patience. I had to make money. I had to learn to be the best as quick as I could. Mm -hmm. And guys helped me big time. Who, who uh, are some of the people that helped you? That first year, I, I shared a bunk, I shared a cabin or whatever you would call it, a bunkhouse with uh, Glenn Ford. Okay. And I said to Glenn, uh, in 10 years, I'm going to make the Golden Shears final. That was my plan. And he just laughed at me, you know, this young Scottish boy. <laughs> yep. And then 10 years later, he shook my hand because I was next in. No. Eighth, eighth, I got in the Golden Shears. Sixth. Took two away from getting in. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was closer than he had ever done, but like he was putting 200 sheep around me a day that first year. Yeah. Is he a relation of like Dan Ford? Aye, same family? Brother. Brother, brother? Yeah. right, okay. And so Older brother, I take it. I wouldn't like to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wouldn't like to say. <laughs> <laughs> Not offended. No, there's yeah. quite a few brothers. Edsel's the oldest one. I worked for Edsel for a year, a couple of years later. Mm -hmm. And I've worked for maybe... 10 or 12 years with Darn. Uh, so, uh, yeah. What part family. of New Zealand was that? With Edsel Ford. It was in a place called uh, Otrahonga. Okay. And with uh, Darn, it was down in Winton, in the South Island. Yeah, okay. Popular shearer spot, isn't it? Aye. aye. They all go there for New Year or something, do they? Or is that, a, is that where they all head for New Year? No, no. In the North Island, all the young boys, the Welsh boys, Scottish boys uh, would congregate in a place called Taupo in the okay. North Island, but uh, down in New Zealand there would be more Queenstown. Ah, right, of course, uh, a very touristy spot. Where yeah. they would go for New Year. I think, I'm sure Lizzie's shore in Winton, I'm sure that's where she was. Aye, aye. Um, aye. And I forgot the name of her contractor now, but it takes a lot of British folk on, I've just forgot his name, he's got a, he's got a I think she has an ex-nursing home or something he's bought, and it houses all the shearers. Um, oh, I do. Terrible, I can't show How many years ago was that? Oh, she's not been there for five. Jamie four. McConaughey? McConaughey. Aye. Yeah, I'm sure that's who it was. I did yeah. uh, maybe five or six years for Jamie. Yep, yep. And Raylene. Uh, very close family. I am very close to that family. Yeah, yeah. Or I used to be when I was there all the time. And When was the last time you were in New Zealand? Uh, World Champs. Oh. 17, was it? Could be. I can't remember. Be, yeah. They, so, not when was the last time you did shed shearing in New Zealand? When was the last that time you had to work? Oh, you, you went there for, aye. of course, I right, to get us all ready for the World Champs. Aye. Yeah, so, okay. did the did, uh, 20, 21 seasons in New Zealand? Right. Wow. So, <laughs> Good effort. I no, no. So, so from, so you've done, tw you did 21 seasons, which is obviously incredible. Work with some big names. One that always comes up, and we watch all the videos on YouTube because that's what she like Keith Wilson. No, nope. you ever worked with him? Never, never worked with him. Been been in his company a few times, but mm -hmm. never worked with him. Yep. Uh, and some of the shearers that worked for him came and worked for us in Loch Head. Okay, uh, but I never. When I went to New Zealand, I, I wanted to be with the, the top show shearers. Okay, so I was always followed around with the Fords or the Fagans. Uh, so you'd worked with David Fagan plenty. I, Ten seasons. I used to get fly in in a fly in at 
eight o'clock in the morning and Wendy, David's wife, would pick me up and I would be in the shed by, before lunchtime, I would be in the shed shearing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, great family. Yeah. Uh, Jack, Jack and his sister, you know, the, when I was there, they were, I remember when Jack was born. Uh, and we, and we, now he's winning open competitions. Now he's, yeah, yeah. forced to be reckoned. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's fine. So, uh, what's interesting for me is to like hear about what the where the passion comes for from for Sheeran. You know, is it is it in the is it the competitiveness of it? Is it trying to be the best? Yeah, it's just a camaraderie among the. It's it's like a big family. You know, everyone knows everyone. When I was down in New Zealand, I knew every young shearer who led and bred on New Zealand. I don't no, but, know. But why, I know all the old ones. But like, <laughs> you know, why do you, why do you want to win? Like, what, like, not why do you want to win? But I know what you want to saying. Like, you're saying there, you straight away you want to be the best. But why shearing? Like, we'll get into sheepdog trialing at some point. Um, but like, you obviously have that competitive bit in you. But why did it? Why was it shearing? Why shearing over dog trialing? Or I started off with dog trialing when I was yeah. So why not? Why, 15, why did you not? Sixteen years old. And focus on that. Travel, travel was a big thing, mm -hmm. mm. but just when you're living and breathing with these guys that's winning, you know, and once you get a taste for it, the winning part, mm -hmm. you know, I would be oh, six or seven years down in New Zealand and wor I was working for David Fagan and, a, well, actually the first year I worked for, with David, we all worked for... Paul Granger, Digger Bam, me and Dean Ball. Mm -hmm. And then we we all moved. Paul Granger gave up and we moved to David. And uh, then on, on a Saturday we would, or a Friday night, uh, go to a speed shear. We all went in the same car. Alan McDonald. And when they were all winning and you weren't winning, mm. you were in five of you in a car and there was five, four uh, prizes. Prize uh -huh. It didn't take long before I had to have a prize too. <laughs> so I find it very difficult on a Saturday on the sh show, but there was hardly a speed share that I w didn't go to and that I had a prize. And sometimes, you know, David Fagan, Alan McDonald, Digger Bam, I had first prize and they had second, third prize going home in the car. Mm -hmm. So th th that was like... The drive. Fire. <laughs> yeah, that, that chasing that buzz. Oh, and, and it is... The adrenaline is a huge thing, especially like, and you, I honestly don't think you even need to win. For, to, like, to be addict, like me going up on the stage at the Highland Show, mm -hmm. for example, well, like, the biggest moment in my shearing career was shearing the national final last year. Uh, it was yourself, Gavin, Callum, Archie, and Stuart Davidson. But like, I was a senior at the point. I'd already packed my gear away. Like, wasn't expecting it. Next mm -hmm. thing, Big Archie gives me a nudge. Like, you know what you're doing you're in this final couldn't believe it and uh, just that adrenaline mm -hmm. right. like but up yeah. the stage where, like your, your idols and sheeran like you know you boys um not so much archie but certainly <laughs> 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 like, like you big guns and like i'm on that stage in front of three i don't know how many a couple of thousand maybe at least a thousand people oh, watching oh, wow. and you're like raised up away up here and it's just like, like tw yeah. 20 sheep as hard as you can and like try and hold on to the boys and it, you don't have to win no it's like a drug it's like you come off there like buzzing hi oh even just the heats at the, the open um this year the open heats i was in a heat with jack robinson um ruben alabaster who's an absolute gun uh, and a spanish boy and I, can't, I can't remember who else was in my heat but like and hamish will get on to me for this as he always does but like i'm not expecting especially this year when the world champs were there and mm -hmm. every amazing shearer there was like 110 in the open oh, wow every amazing shearer was there so i wasn't expecting to make a semi so i'm just like let's enjoy this let's yeah. have a go with these guys like i knew ruben would go like hell so i'm like let's have a go i seen my pen was an absolute belter as well because another controversial thing i had a bare belly you know and that became a whole thing because some people didn't oh. have bare bellies and i think you had a dog of a pen or was it calm had a really bad pen and it was very mixed the sheep we'll go onto the sheep at the world champs we'll not worry about that <laughs> later but anyway just like i'm like i'm gonna have a race here yeah yeah and it was the buzz i finished like i was finished 24th so i didn't make the semi-final but was that 24 out of 120 uh 24 out of 110 i think it was in oh, about there, yeah, yeah. But, but i have to absolutely say my pen 
like the sheep were so varied in that open it was okay. unreal whereas like my pen was incredible like as soon as it opened nice open necks okay like i looked at the pen and thought that's, like i've got a game on yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, we'll put it this way if, if, if hamish had had that pen he'd, he'd be up there top three qualifying like you know right yeah. okay whereas me i made an asset and came <laughs> 24th but and I, I give an example of that and and i beat jack robinson by 20 odd seconds mm -hmm. jack qualified third but in the highland show in those settings especially because a lot of folk are watching me because of the sheep game and that if you're first off, folk think you've won. Aye. aye. You know what I mean? Uh, like, you've yeah. been there as well. I think you said about, like, Scotland v England yep. and the team thing. You know, you fell a wee bit behind the Scotland. I mean, let's just, we're there now. Let's mm -hmm. get into the World Champs. I do want to come back and talk about Shearing Heroes and stuff, but we're at the World Champs. Uh -huh. Scotland v England, I think you said something to me about, you know, he's, he's fell a wee bit behind and you come on second and it's like, well, we just can't have, for the crowd, you just can't have Scotland coming off behind England. No, uh, most certainly, but we were there as a team and I was in second uh, mm -hmm. to come on and cheer and uh, Callum had struggled a bit. He had done some of the rougher sheep and, uh, well, I had to help him out, you know, and, uh, well, we were just weren't going to have them. I'm very good friends with Adam Berry and I just couldn't have him say it. He beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, and they were all saying that I'm too old and all the rest of it. So I thought, game on. Yeah. You know. I mean, watching you go and look at like like a, a windmill, man, just like firing at them out at rapid. Pace. And like, it was great because it was so busy. And that was another issue with the world champs. We couldn't get the full one. But I was watching it on the big screen outside with a huge crowd at this point. And like, you know, the commentators obviously were, ugh, the commentators were, you know, were good. They are good boys. And like, they were getting in behind Hamish and like, here he uh, comes. And it's like, everybody's getting excited because uh, everybody watching, it's just, if we finish before them, aye. England yeah. beat us. England beat us. But if we finish before them, we've beat them. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that that builds the buzz. Because yeah. then everybody's excited. And even out the back, they were all shouting at the screen, like cheering, really? cheering you on. And that was a shame that you couldn't get the whole wave of people cheering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something they'll, they'll worry about next time. But yeah, even at the back, at the big screen, it was raining as well. And empty shouting, you know, come yeah. on, Hamish, and all that, and you got the buzz. Um, so that is, I'm getting excited talking yeah. about it. Um, but talking about, you know, I'm going to cut in here. See this, some buzz. Mm -hmm. I remember saying that 20 years ago. Oh, Hamish, you can't <laughs> have it. You pinched that you off. You cannot of have it. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Do you know where that started? Honest, true story. Do you know where that all started? Some buzz was Scott Sheep when it was at Ballantrae. And James Andrew and I somehow made the final of that sheer competition because we had <laughs> uh, Leanne Bertram doing the will. Do you remember this? That team event. I, I don't know if you showed in it. No, you did. You showed f in, the in the team. No, you didn't. But you showed for Scotland against Northern Ireland. But you, right, didn't, you didn't shear in the, aye, the event aye. below. But like, for example, Callum and Alistair sure as a team. But what got us through was because we went down with Rousey and Leanne was there for the test with you guys, the Scotland team. And I said to Leanne, would you come in our team? And we, we somehow, <laughs> James Andrews was away up the road to see a cow calving because obviously <laughs> we thought no chance, like no chance we're making the final. Uh, but Leanne was so good at wool handling. Stop it. Yeah, that, like our Sheeran was terrible, but she was so good <laughs> that it got us in the final. God knows how they worked the actual scoring. Like there was a lot to be questioned. It was a bit of a fun event for the crowd. It was 100%. It was. Yeah, it was a bit of a it fun. It was some buzz. It was <laughs> so that, like me, because then it got even better because James was away. The non Irish boys, which was Jack and uh, Monty, I'm sure it was. They were great. They were just like, just pick somebody else. So I was like, well, Callum. Because <laughs> he, he'd get bummed out with Alistair. Aye. So he was there anyway. So I was like, oh, Callum, you want to come up? And he's like, oh, okay. Uh, so then Callum and I, and it was great because Callum Shore, we actually won because Callum Shore, the 10 dogs, like he, he did the pen and he gave me every bare belly and every peeler. And then he showed the 10 worst ones after. And, and somehow we won because I got the easy sheep. Um, but that I was sky high yeah. after that. Like, to be up there shearing with like, because I was only a, I was only a, I was actually still a junior then, although I was shearing in intermediates. So like, it was Unreal. a freak to be up there against like the- You, you were know, a policeman then? Still a policeman then, yeah. But I, I, shearing, I remember following you up the road. Uh, Afterwards, that, you uh, were going to your work. Uh, that's right, straight, straight back <laughs> to work. Yeah, yeah. And I often did things like that, shearing in the morning and go to work. But yeah, there, that was- So I thought if I stay, stay close, I'll not get done for speeding. Yeah, well, well <laughs> obviously, I, was, I, I was quite often in a rush to get to work because I left it to the last possible minute. But yeah, no, that's where some buzz started because I, yeah, yeah. I was just in cloud nine after that. Um, it was incredible. But keeping it focused on yourself because I get, I get very excited talking. <laughs> 
into the when did you make the open? And for anyone who doesn't know, the open is the top grade. There's four grades: junior, intermediate, senior, open, which is what you are. I I only saw her in the senior, and uh, I got disqualified that year, and the next year I went into the open. So you never actually qualified up. You just put yourself up. I well, I was doing sheep numbers. Okay, okay. So back, it should still be the same today. But if you were doing, I think it was three hundred and ten, you had to move up, or was it four hundred and ten? You had to you had to move up with your tally. It wasn't just winning the show. But uh, I I couldn't beat David Fagan. I couldn't beat Tom Wilson because mm -hmm. they were in the open and I was in the senior. Okay. So I could only beat them if I was in the open. So I wanted in the open. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> oh, see, I'm like I'm very different. Like moving from the senior to the open, and the difference in that is massive. Because in the senior, you're up against people that haven't really won anything, because by the very virtue of the promotion process, mm -hmm. if they have won a few, they move up. Yeah. So you're in a oh, pool of losers. Yeah, of course. You know, all the way down the grade, you're kind of in a pool of losers. Mm -hmm. So it's very equal, and anyone can come to the top. But once you get into the open. Anything. Well, all of a sudden, there's not many sports like in the world where I go against guys that have never really won anything. Mm -hmm. To all of a sudden, I'm up against three, four world champions, Scottish yeah. champions, uh, world record holders, yeah. all, and you and you can be sharing here to there from them in a competition. Yeah, that's do fine. you know what I mean? Yeah, it's good, yeah. Like like me sharing that national final with you boys. You know, we've got well, all three of you have been world finalists. Gav's won the world champs. Uh, you've won the Scottish champs. How many times won the Scottish champs? Pass. 17, 18, they usually read it out. I can't remember, it's ridiculous. Like that, eh? Yeah, yeah. One luck Elmhead, God knows how many times. And, and I'm up there just this boy that's won nothing. Yeah. You know, but yeah. It's, yeah, there's not many sports like that. No. But um, then that's also, that's like for pushing you on, for young, pushing young ones on as well to get the opportunity to be up Sheeda next to. Oh, yeah. Those, yeah you yeah. know. Yeah, and like Hamish is the guy I'm coming for because, like, yeah. you'll not mind me saying this. Callum probably is the, the number one now. You'd, you'd hate see, I know, I knew you would do that. I knew you'd take that. I'm going to say he is the next, just based on last year. I haven't picked yet. No, I, I'm just saying based on last year, because he's so competitive, he just like wouldn't have said that. But I'm going to say that on the podcast here. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that you're the guy I'm coming for next year. Good on you, boy. Right, so, so watch hope yourself. You, hope on, you don't want me to wait for you. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the sad thing is, like in my head, although I say that, I'm like, behave cammy it's not gonna happen <laughs> and do you so see after you've you've won obviously so so many competitions do you still get that same buzz when you're up there and you're competing yeah yes and no uh is it not like pressure now because there's like an expectation there final. do you not feel that no 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 it's like riding a bike you know you'll never forget how to ride a bike well shearing the sheep's the same you know if i have a month off uh you just fall back into it, and it's, I don't know, it's very hard to describe. Mm. I'm very competitive, doesn't matter what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember David Fagan years ago, how to get the adrenaline going before a competition was, well, you drive your car, you make sure you're late and get into the competition, <laughs> so you jump out the car, buzzing. Yeah. And that's where that buzz came from. Right, yeah, yeah. some buzz, just driving there. You were buzzing when you got out of the car. So you got your handpiece on. You were still buzzing from the journey. And 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 then straight in. Were they straight are, into that's it. a great David Fagan insight. Go yeah. late to the shows and go like hell so you make it and the adrenaline's up. And then but like you I remember one year, David, we, 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 I was working for him. I was really close with the family at the time, you know, and, and right, we'll we'll get a dirt bike. But it wasn't just a wee one two five dirt bike, it was the biggest powerfulest thing that you could get. And it was flying machine. So all the young boys would come around and have a go in this, you know, and oh, there was one or two broke their legs and their arms and they were that was them out of the competition for that week. <laughs> but David and I never. Uh, and and it, it was an adrenaline thing. Yeah, just saw a blast on it and, oh, and get the blood up. Mm -hmm. Get the blood up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you're like a different man at, at the shows, like when you're when you're about to go on or or when you're near that mm -hmm. point, you're like in the zone. You're like, yeah. I've done I've done your pen before and find when it doesn't know doing his pen, that means like I'm handing him the sheep as he's shearing and it's terrifying. Why? Oh, because he's a maniac. What? Oh, he's just so intense. He's like, like I, like now if I know he's going up, I'll avoid eye, eye contact with him <laughs> just so I don't get asked to do his pen. Because it's, it's like when Hamish is up there, it's like before he goes in, he's like, 
Like he's getting right, into the zone. Right, okay. Oh, he's like, I was going to ask if you have any like, oh, like rituals or things yeah. that you do before you You, you wouldn't go speak on. to him. Like he's just like, he's he's tuned, he's in now. He's like, right, okay. You, you can sense it as well because you're like. But is that not like any sports? Well, it's like top folk. You, I would you, say that you, as, you a, as a to, sign of the top guys. You, you're you like, have well, to. It, it's, what sports person have you seen that isn't a bit selfish and arrogant? Yeah. Oh, the top guys. Yeah. You have to be, to be successful. To be yep. successful, whether it's a golfer or a tennis player, and yep, uh, <clears throat> you can psych people out, your competitors out mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And I learned that from McEnroe, your tennis player. Yeah. He, he used to shout at the umpire saying, "You cannot be serious." And, uh -huh, uh -huh. and and I had seen an interview with him one time, and it was, "What do you think the other guy's doing when I'm arguing with the ref?" He's standing down there thinking I'm an idiot, but he's getting cold. And my blood's getting up. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's clever. Yeah, and that, that was is. McEnroe. That's tennis. very clever. And I tried to take that to Sheeran. Yeah. Yeah, so like when, this you, was when you're arguing every five time, years ago. Every time you look at your pen, you call the referee up, it's just getting your blood up whilst <laughs> the rest standing about going, no, again, Hamish. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that that's a good point. Yeah, it Men is. games, yeah. That's exactly. I learned it off of Fagan. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's I who you know. for anyone that doesn't know David would it, would it be fair to say the best competition shearer ever aye, aye def in my eyes yeah, yeah. You know, some of the I young, think statistically as well modern ones uh, but he's the only guy that could be three sheep behind when he gets to sheep 16 and he'll finish in front <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. just phenomenal he, he sort of was it, it wasn't finished I, I remember him winning at uh, Lakeland I'm sure he won at Lakeland one year I was there so he must have just been coming to the end when I started, um, because I, I wasn't really aware of him. Um, well, I was aware, I became aware of him. I started going to shows, of course, because yeah. he was a top open guy, <laughs> but I never, I wasn't aware of the, how it, impressive he was. Like, I just think oh, this guy's pretty good. Aye, um, aye. And obviously since I've learned a lot more about him and, and the things he's won, and obviously Jack's coming through now and a lot of pressure on him, like incredible how he's doing with the pressure. Yeah, he, he's got a hell of a big boots to fill. Like, yeah. he, uh, David was unique. Yeah. He, he, I'll take my hat off to Jack if he can even get half his boots on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. David was... He'd be a good one to try and get in. But in I've got a couple of questions I want to cover, but like one, the first one is, what's your first big win? What was the first one you're like, I'm the boy now? Never got there. Still not got it? No. You must, what was it? You must have, what was your first, come on. There, there's, all, there's one that you've been like, yes. No, it's... Uh, Beating Tom Wilson or... David Fagan. Well, probably some of my biggest ones wasn't winning. It was qualifying or or just being in amongst it. Uh, because but, but you're, th I'm, you're thinking biggest ever. I'm talking about the first one. Like, what was the first one where you're like, I'm in with these guys now? Mm. You know, I'm not talking about making world championship finals and all these mad things you've done. Like, I'm talking about, you know, it could have been a wee thing at Hawke's Bay or just some competition somewhere in New Zealand where you're like, I'm there. No, uh, I can't, can't say it anything stuck out I was always if I, my first one I won the guys that I wanted to beat weren't in it right okay yeah, and yeah. all I wanted to do was them to be in it uh, why are there specific people that you would want to beat uh, like just because they're the best yeah and I hear so much talking about them and I want to bring them off their platform I remember a young Scottish shearer well he was young at the time he's not young now but he used to say you know Oh, you'll get on well today because Fagan's not here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, suggesting you can't beat him. And, yeah. and the week before, I was only 0.2 of a point away from him. But the next man behind us I was maybe two points in front of him. Yeah. And then the following week, uh, David wasn't there. But the same guy was second. I won. And like, the same guy was, that was third was second. But he was only 0.2 of a point behind me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when Fagan was there, it lifted you up. But, aye. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Funny that. Because, but that and that is true. Like, because that and that's one thing. When anyone watching this year in competition, commentators got a big role to pay, play, and your pen man as well. But commentators generally have a big role in letting the shearers know who's in front. You know, your pen man's good for that too. But like, it, it must have push you on when you know he's he's a sheep ahead of you. No, it, I use it the other way. I hope that the commentators go and talking about me because the rest of them are all thinking about me then. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. You know, you want, so, so would you say you want to always be getting that bit in front to make them keep talking about you to psych the rest out? Depends who I'm up against. You know, sometimes, the first time I beat David in the UK, uh, 
I had went a wee bit slower. He beat me on the quality out the back. The next time I beat him on quality out the back, but he beat me on the board. Mm -hmm. And that was because I was always in front. So the third time I beat him, I let him go in front and I beat him on quality. Okay. But I just sat behind just him. Changing the tact a bit. And mm -hmm. I, that was advice I got off a person, you know, that's you have to try something different to beat him. Yeah. Because he, he was such a professional at reading the situation. So after that, then I started lear learning how to read the situation. You didn't, you know, you know, who, whoever you were up against, some some people would always do their best three or four sheep first to get in front of me mm -hmm. and uh, to try and rattle me. Yeah. So then I soon learned this, you know, so then a couple of shows later, I would do all my ugliest sheep first and they got in front of me Well, they thought they were mm -hmm. away. Mitchell's down today because mm -hmm. he always does a couple of good ones first. And then the last five sheep, I came home and all the good ones, but they didn't have good ones left. I'm not saying that they didn't have any good sheep. The sheep in a competition is usually all good, but there is a there is a 10 second between a good sheep and a very good sheep. Yes, uh, yes, of course. So, like the example I was saying earlier, like I knew looking at my pen, like I could be first yeah. off here because this is yeah. an unbelievable pen. And you just know looking at it, and you get that buzz and it does give you a lift. Like the sheep can, it can feel it, right, I've got my work cut out here, or you're like, I'm in, I'm through. Mm -hmm. Especially guys like yourself. Like you'll know if you look at a pen, you'll be like, well, sorted. Um, but you kind of rely on that, I know. So for you, so you don't have a first big win, but what about your, your shearing heroes as you were coming up through? No, obviously David, David's a big, big win, rival. My but first big win was... There you go. My first child being born. Oh. That was the biggest thing ever. Some You're boy, disappointed, aren't you? No, but he's, he's smooth, <laughs> he, is. he is smooth, like he's a charmer. That, that was... He is a charmer. You haven't even mentioned the kids when I'm saying who's Hamish Mitchell. They're saying, no, that's smooth. You haven't <laughs> got through that bit yet. No, I know, and we will get we will get a bit to the family. And, and of course, you've got three kids now. Yep. Now, young, well, two of them at least, young adults now. No, 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 still. no, no, <laughs> not till they're twenty-five. <laughs> no, my, the one's my, only thirty. Uh, four, sorry, only fourteen, is it? Or uh, my middle one's fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, my son's twelve, and my oldest one's seventeen. Seventeen. She's in New Zealand shearing at the moment. Rousing. Rousing, yeah, yeah, yeah. E exciting. Is she getting so, on all right? I was working for a guy called Rod Sutton, who ne worked, never heard him. Worked, worked with us in Norway there's for an, many a year. There's another big name, yeah, Rod Sutton. He's he's another one that you see a lot of videos of, and you hear all these stories of like a thousand lambs in a day. And is he one you've worked with? Yep, yeah, and and very. He worked with me in Norway. The two of us raced every day for a couple of months in Norway every year. But uh, my biggest thing with Rod was, before I had worked with him in Norway, I was shearing for Fagan and Rod was doing the record and 10 o'clock at night he phoned up David and asked me if I would do his pen at his record on the use. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was huge honour. Yep. It was so you were in his pen for, and that is the rec the famous record where the use were off. Um, am I right in saying the use were, the wheel weight was, was it? Aye, he, made, he did it by one. Did Is that the record? One. Yeah, and they used, like, the video, the use looked terrible. Well, they were, they were good use. The, the, use the, the, just, the wool, sorry. The wool the, looked the, terrible. The use were very good, but uh, it had rained for a fortnight, and we had to, or around about a fortnight, and we had to cancel it. Mm -hmm. And the sheep were all in the handling pens for a week. Yeah. Uh, in the rain, and they just they lost their shine. Yeah. So uh, Rod, Rod was a um, uh, huge heart. Mm. And he managed to dig it out. I think he's by one. very famous for that uh, a machine. So in, in the video for MD, I might put a wee clip on the YouTube uh, video of this podcast. <laughs>
there was a fantastic video of, of the record or certainly a compilation mm -hmm. of the record and like anybody that's keen on competition she unlike myself like i've watched all the videos on youtube of all these shearers and the sheep do look but like the wool does look off like you can, you can see visually looking at it it looks like it's a struggle oh, really? well not for him he's a machine he's absolutely yeah. killing them out <laughs> but they look nothing like what you see competition sheep now okay like oh. it looked totally different looks just totally different sheep um and of course to break a rec world record by one sheep yeah, is mad that's mad like it's yeah incredible. no no uh, but that that's what all the records was back then was by one or two sheep like yeah, you know, yeah. they were that's how it should be though like yeah. there has been some crazy records recently there but it will tighten up again the margins uh, will get smaller and smaller the, the quality is a huge thing but the quality in the whole world is slipping of the sheep of the finish the finish yeah uh, but there's rules like people talk about this quality and it's records. not the shearers not the competitors it's, Aye, it's the, rules they're, yeah. they're just following the rules same as the competitions but i know in, in norway i worked with rod uh, for a good few years and his wife would come over and do the wool and she hated it when the two of us were together because Rod wouldn't be beaten and I wouldn't be beaten and it was my sheep. Uh -huh. It wasn't New Zealand where Rod would be on a different planet to me. Mm -hmm. But in Norway... Big sheep. It was my... And there was a... We were shearing them in the abattoir so there was somebody controlling the quality if you, if you were... Cutting anything or not, leaving too much on. Uh, if you were just yeah. not being it quality good enough you know you got yeah knocked so it was a an even playing field in norway and yeah i can always remember rod's wife not happy that the two of us weren't <laughs> together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so well, it's bloody hard work for her trying to keep up was she the only rousy or one one per person no it was one one each but uh, it's a lot to do with the wool in norway it's not just uh, i sweep it forward yeah yeah, yeah 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 there's a lot a lot to do with the wool and and when you're doing one every 35 40 seconds you don't have much time to to do the wool yeah and of course you met uh, your wife jj in norway in right norway saying? yeah yes yeah norwegian norwegian she was uh, doing the wool at a shearing competition when i met her in the south of norway and uh, and you wowed her with your shearing prowess <laughs> no i don't think that was quite was it the grunt, she grunting it? and shouting at the pen that did it uh, <laughs> so anyway yeah that's where we met and she was traveling too. She was doing wool and her mother ran the wool store, mm -hmm. the wool station in, mm. in that part of Norway. And uh, yeah. So the rest is history. Three kids later. And I moved into Scotland for her. You, did you, you didn't live in, oh, you we, did live in Norway for a bit. We traveled, we traveled for about 20 years around the world. Uh, she earned maybe not quite 20 with, with uh, my wife, but uh, we're going to set up in Scotland and then she missed Norway. So we moved, so she moved back to Norway. And then as soon as uh, my oldest daughter was born, I, I moved over and we set up in Norway. Mm -hmm. So, and then about seven years ago, we, it was my wife's decision uh, or my wife had brought the subject up about, it would be nice to bring the kids up in Scotland. Mm -hmm. It was, Farming in Norway is quite small compared and 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 ever you very clinical and yeah yeah so a uh, very little shows to for the kids to meet other farmers and mm -hmm. where my kids had been over here at all the shows here the shearing shows which is an agricultural show and they meet all the different farming mm. children so my wife thought we maybe be better bringing them up here and what did we think so. We sold up over there and we bought. We moved over to Scotland. I think it was seven years ago, and I just passed seven years ago. And we we bought a farm uh, just outside Stirling. So uh, farming there for th three or four years, and then I got an offer that we couldn't refuse on the on a on a bigger farm. So I still have our own farm run it, and I'm kind of managing day to day. Managing the boss, the, a guy called you and Cheap, just pretty much lets me do what he do what I, I feel, and and we've got a grand relationship. Yeah. Uh, and I like should get a day off to go shearing. Yeah. Go to the competitions. 
his words were as long as his work gets done, doesn't matter. So, yeah. so I just make sure that everything's covered at home, and if I need away for a week or a couple of days, and, we we get away. And who was your? I've mentioned a lot of big names, yeah. but like, like who was your hero? The heroes have heroes. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> That's the problem. You can't say who it is because you're such a hero. No, that's not true. Who, who, who's come, your on. Hero? come on, who's who's your hero? There was always people I wanted to strive to beat. Yeah, well, who's your biggest... <laughs> let's say, right, not your hero. Competitor. No, your biggest influence. Let's say that, eh? Yeah, let's, yeah, that's... Let's, let's, who's the one that drove you on and was like, he's the, he's the guy that I want to be like and want to beat most? I, I couldn't name just one. There's so many of them. Like the names you've mentioned, like you David, know, Tom and Wilson, uh, uh, Tom Wilson, David Fagan. You know they were the, the North and the Southern Hemisphere. They were the men. Shannon Warnest in Australia. He came and worked for us. You know, and I, when I was in Australia, he just was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got Rod and Digger Bam. You know, I stayed with Digger for years, and uh, yeah, Darren Ford. So, no, nah, I couldn't name any because I would be too scared that I miss somebody out because uh, yeah. I wouldn't want to offend anybody because there's lots of guys that never were at the top but still helped me. A lot of farmers, a lot of uh, Scottish guys, Colin McGregor, uh, uh, Davy Stewart. Mm -hmm. That was the first job that I ever got. Sheeran was with Davy Stewart and Glen Shee. Uh, a guy, my first Sheeran course, that I wasn't meant to be on was a guy called Robert McDonald, uh, who is one of the head ones in the NFU now. Right, okay. Uh, you know, I owe him yeah. gratitude or whatever you would say for hanging the machine up for, for his help, you know. Mm -hmm. but I, th I think, to be fair, you've covered a few good names yeah. there that a lot of people will know and, and you know, be like, and, and there is that big thing. And I, I said something one time that really struck a chord with people, and it was myself, and I was and you'll have done this as well, coming up through the sheer world, and uh, I guess it's butchering another quote from someone, but it's along the lines of, like, if you're the best shearer on the trailer, as it is here, or in the shed in New Zealand, if you're the best shearer on the shed or the best shearer on the trailer, you're on the wrong trailer. Yeah. And, and that's the way I always oh, looked at okay. it with my shearing. It's like, I didn't want to be, I was I never wanted to be the top gun on the, sh on, I wanted, especially on the way up now, like, I don't mind a race if I can, like, I'm still miles away for you guys, I get that, like, but when I was junior and immediate senior, if I'm the top shearer there, what am I learning? Mm -hmm. Nothing. And what's pushing you? Well, yeah, what's pushing you, but what are you learning? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, you're just, you're just getting a false ego that you're some sort of gun. I can remember mm -hmm. 15 years ago, 20 years ago, whenever it was, uh, and thinking I was doing well, doing 550 sheep in a day in New Zealand. Not bad. And six other guys in the gang putting a hundred round me. Yeah. Yeah, six guys. Six of them. Yeah. I was a drummer boy. <laughs> and I had done five. Five? Fifty or something. For, for anyone listening, for reference, I think my biggest day is about 480. So, and that's on UK sheep and more than eight hours. So, yeah, that, that's, no, that's that insane. Was, uh, to, be, to, to be better, you have to be shearing against people that's better than you. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, going back, you know, some of these idols... Guys, I strive to to be or beat, and once I once they started coming off their up at the top or getting mm -hmm. too old, or mm -hmm. I, I did beat some of them before they got too old. Yeah, but they, then there was some young ones would come through, and they would be pretty cocky, and and uh, I think I could just go a wee bit again here, you know, and then I would be striving to make sure that I was still beating these young ones. Mm -hmm. So oh. I owe I owe to them too. For some of my success, because it was them that drove me to keep pushing on. To keep mm. pushing on, you know, and and something we better cover. And it's a well-known story for. And that'll be that'll be uh, like Gavin, Callum Shaw, some of the English boys, uh, Welsh boys. You know, the it's a camaraderie. It's not. They're not. They're friends. They're not enemies. Well, well, it's that but, thing when you're on the board and it's like Archie did his wee video thing he did, and it was great. It's like when you're in that shed and you're against each other all day. These are like enemies, you like hate each other. Mm -hmm. But as soon as five o'clock comes, you're best mates. Aye. Aye. You know, yeah. like when you and when you and um oh, Sutton, when you and Rod were in New Zealand 
uh, in Norway racing all day, you'd be hating each other's guts. You wouldn't really. You know, that's extreme, but uh, it's there. It's yeah. Like, it's like, oh, it's, like, it's just Aye, like. No. But as soon as it finishes, it's a laugh. Have a beer. Like, oh, you know, I'll get you the yeah. morrow. You know, you got me today. And, and that's the way she is. It's like this. Oh, I hate this. And then, then you get it finished. It's like, well done, mate. You yeah. Know? The bad feeling it's goes forgotten. straight away. It's forgotten. It's, it's not even a bad feeling. No, it's not. It's just you're so competitive, you hate losing. Yeah. And, and you know, if it starts slipping, you start getting fired up. Like, mm -hmm. you only get those feelings when you're falling a few behind. Yeah. Um, But uh, something we must talk about, you know, before we're very conscious of our time, something we must talk about and, and a big thing that happened to yourself a couple of years, two, three years ago now it'd be, four years ago maybe, you, uh, now to keep me right on this here, how did this come about that you ended up being diagnosed? You had cancer, aye, a tumour or cancer. Just, What's the right term? Just a, just a growth that I had to get removed. Yeah, cancerous type growth. Or, yeah, yeah. Yep. And and how did it come about that you, like, what happened that you discovered this? <laughs> uh, thanks to my daughter, uh, she decided to buy a bigger horse, and uh, we were being a bit silly with this fresh new horse, and I was lifting my wee fella off the top of it and it was 17 to the horse and uh, Bob was his name and he does doing a little bit of prancing around so my daughter got pushed forward by him and I was still holding my my wee fella up in the air taking him off the back and he gave me both both feet in the chest and split my broke my sternum oh geez. so uh when I got to the hospital, you know, the things were bad and, and they, then they decided the next day that they wanted to investigate something else and they found that I had a, just the size of a small, small apple uh, on my kidney. So they took half my kidney out and, and uh, so they, they reckon that Bob saved my life. Absolutely. And do, do you know what that is a perfect, have you ever heard that old Chinese proverb about bad luck being good luck? No. So there's, a, and I use you, I've used your example to a lot of people when talking about it because it actually involves a horse, this old thing. So uh, the story goes that um, this guy, poor farmer, has this one horse and it runs away and all the villagers are like, oh, sorry about that, bad luck, that sounds, that's terrible. And he's like, maybe. And then the next day the horse comes back with five other horses and now he's got six horses. <laughs> and then his son... Um, who's the only, he's kind of old and frail, his son goes out to work with these new horses and he's trying to break them. And similar one throws him off and he breaks his arm and now he can't work or he breaks his leg and now he can't work and he's, oh, they like, oh God, that, that's such bad luck, you know, nobody to help you now. He's like, maybe. And then the next day the conscription officer comes by looking for young able men to go to war, but they leave his son because he's got a broken leg. Aye. And it's like, you don't know if it's bad luck. Yeah. And and I and I use your example in that same because it's got horses in it and the key. It's almost the exact same story. It's right. like you'd say getting your sternum broken is bad luck, but it's the luck, one of the luckiest things that's ever happened to you. Aye, no, definitely. And that's a prime example. You just don't know. Definitely. Like, oh, I, I think, yeah, I think, yeah. I think, I think that's a great thing. So you obviously wasn't it straightforward as just cutting this thing out and taking half. It, well, what it, happened in it, the? It, it was. It was very straightforward. The went to be in the hospital for five days. Ended up being in ICU for about three months. Mm -hmm. uh, just everything went wrong. Mm. Different parts of my body shut down and, and broke and burst. And uh, yeah, there was a big fight to get me to come around. Yep. So, uh, but we made it out the other side. Clearly, you're here now. And, you know, we all, you know, at the time, there was a lot of, we knew it was very, very bad and it went quite bad. Coming back out though, you know, a lot of us were thinking the same as going to be sharing again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like we were, absolutely, because some, something like that, three months intensive care, serious operation coming off the back of it. Did you have to do some chemo or any of that stuff after no, it or no, radiation? They, they, no, no, they're, uh, they're pretty confident that everything was good. You took enough out to... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that, no, that's one saving grace. But all, the, all, all the problems wasn't the cancer that, the, that caused the problems, it was just unfortunate other organs in my body that shut down or, or decided to run away from where they should be. And Someone told me, you didn't tell me this, but someone told me that he died on the operating table twice. Uh, they had to bring me back a couple of times, yeah. Yeah. 
So. That's why now. That's why now at Sheeran competitions, the, the commentators keep calling him the Terminator, <laughs> which I love. It's great. So he went from the lanky loon from Sky to Hamish Mitchell, the Terminator, because you just can't kill him. Um, so I no, landed very lucky, can we? Uh, and were yeah. you straight? Like, did it take you a while to to get back to, into Sheeran? I uh, I had given up mentally. Right. I thought. I was fat history, you know. Mm -hmm. I went, I went from one hundred and eight kilos to sixty eight kilos. Oh my god! And uh, oh, you look how terrible. can you, how can you ever? So mentally, I, I was beat. I had good family around about me, and mm -hmm. but still, that wasn't enough. I, I was in a bad place, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, then I got a phone call saying that Six Nations were and Bill Morrow. Mm -hmm. That I had qualified for the team. Mm -hmm. Are you going to make it? And I, there's no way I could have shorn sheep that day. That I got told or asked, so I says, "Yep, <laughs> nobody else is getting my ticket." <laughs> and it was the best thing ever because it gave you a goal to drive yeah. towards. It gave me a goal. Yeah, I, huge, huge difference that made to me that one. Mm. And then, and then. Was it the fact that they were doubting you could do it? No. You know, they, no, it was, was it the way thing. they said it? Like, it was a mental thing you manage to this? me. Uh, uh, I used it to... And then once I realised that that I was going to... That I was on the rise, then I had nothing to lose. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I had been there and... You have, to live, you have to live every day as if it's your last day. So... I went to Balmoral, didn't do any good, was so unfit and uh, struggling health-wise. And I was so cross with myself. I think the next one I saw with you was Les Mahigo. Yeah. And it's, let me tell the story because you won't do it justice. <laughs> Honestly, it was actually a borderline emotional. Honestly, really? it was incredible. So Because we all knew Hamish's story, like, and we all, we'd all seen how bad he looked. Mm -hmm. And as I say, like, folk were like, God, like, sure. How can he come back and shear again? Uh huh. Like he's, you know, you had lost a lot of weight, and you, although you were looking a lot better by then, oh, to be fair. But this is more like you know, one you come in and see his crutching at Stirling, and you actually did a bit of crutching a few days, at, you know, um, as well. So you were, you were looking better all the time, mm. but still you're like, Christ, how can he come back yeah. and compete at that level, right? And there's video footage of this. I'll try and maybe slot it in if I can find it because I did a, a video that day, and Hamish Open final, well, in the Open, Matt Smith there. Stuart Connor, Matt Smith's world record holder uh, on the nine hour. Uh, Stuart Connor's world record holder on the nine hour lambs. Um, who else was? Who else Callum. was? Callum. Was it? Was it you? Who's Stuart and Callum in that final? I think it was. Yes, I think it yes, was. Sir, I think it, I was, think it yeah. was. So, but big Matt there and some of the Welsh boys as well and loads and loads of top shearers at this because it was mm -hmm. coming into World Champs year. They weren't as much practice in Scottish sheep. And Hamish, and Les Mahigo is a very tough one to make a final because there's only three stands. You know, most oh, okay. finals are six stands. So you only need right, the top okay. six to be in the final. At Les Mahigo, you have to be top three. So anyway, Hamish makes it. Um, and, and Callum, I'm sure it was Callum and Stuart were in the final. And they just went mental. And they finished a whole sheep, like a whole, sh the commentator, it was the commentators <laughs> actually made it because I think it was Big Die Clark or somebody. And like, just, they were, just the way they were pumping the crowd up and Hamish uh -huh. was just in the zone. And like he come off as soon as it finished and you couldn't leave the stage initially, you have to wait for the other competitors to finish. That's the rules. Right. But as soon as they finish, usually be running down the back, like, you know, bit of mind games on at the judges and seeing what's going on. But he was like outside, like, you know, going to be sick. And we were, I was like, oh, he's going to pass out here. Uh. He, but and he's coming out, he's covered in blood. Because uh, he'd just been in such as he just ran into the door. <laughs> well, I thought some. My first thought was something bad yeah, had happened. I was, I was thinking. But then I seen like his whole singlet was ripped open and he's all cut because he just ran into the edge <laughs> of the door because he's just in that zone. And this is a guy who probably just over twelve months before or about twelve. It was died twice, and I just remember the whole oh thing my. was quite like we were all yeah. just like Hamish Mitchell. Yeah. Like you know we were all nudging each other like. He's some boy. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's back. Yeah. He's back. Yeah. And that, that, was, that must have been special yeah. for you. Like, talking about big wins, I don't care what I'm, that must have been special because there were big names there. I thought it was even more special because my, my kids thought that I was history. Right. 
the way they had seen me. You know, yeah, like yeah. yeah. We actually stopped the kids coming to the hospital to see me because I was getting so bad and weak. Mm. But that day, uh, when I came off the stage and Norman was there, and I think he had been messing around with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think he was in the and video. There was a yep. tear in his eye. Yeah. He was so proud yeah. of his dad. Mm-hmm. And that was the biggest moment. In fairness, I would say that every Scottish shearer there was pretty proud. Like, we were all like, there he is. Yeah. Especially because, you know, we always wanted to be, you know, but Stuart and Matt and that got on great, great lads. I was, but when it comes to, you still want the Scottish guys to win. <laughs> I mean, let's not be stupid here. Yeah. Like, I'm still rooting for the Scottish guy. Yeah. Um, so I, just caught, you, I just caught Stuart and Callum on the back foot at the beginning of that event. Uh, and they, they tried to catch up. And I just had that wee bit determination left in. When, when, when you're at the top of a hill, it's easy to go free wheel down the other side. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got in front, so I was freewheeling, and they were trying to play the catch up. Yeah. Where if it had gone the other way, and I was trying to catch up, you know, it would have been a different. Yeah, yeah, and that happened to other competitions, I'm sure. That, that's it. but that just yeah. that one special, and I yeah. was like, you know, because we were all doubting it as well. Mm. You know, like folk can pretend, oh, I knew, I knew he'd come back. Yeah. I was, I was like, oh, I just don't see how he can come back from this and compete with these guys. Mm-hmm. All them competitions, every single one of them that we did that year, I think I spent. The next four days after every one of them in bed. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, we to go. I've got a very conscious that I could sit and talk to you all day. And what a lot of folk don't know is I probably speak to Hamish once a week on the phone for about forty minutes to an hour <laughs> at a time. So it's not like any of this is new, you know. Although we are talking, you know, we don't really talk about this kind of stuff. No, um, it's more general, general it's chat. All in the past, aye. But it is good for people to know the story because I think it's just incredible. Um, but yeah, that season. You picked up, a, or you're supposed to pick up a pair of moccasins for me. I can't remember, was it moccasins or something you were moccasins, meant to bring me? Aye. And then you never lifted them anyway. But anyway, I met you at a services at one in the morning because you'd been away down to Stafford or some bloody show away south and he had a bulge in his stuff, like where obviously your injury had been. He stuck, like, and he's in the car, like madness. Like, I was like, what did I do here? I'm like, did I, I can't drive you all the way home because it's so far, but it's like, yeah, and he's a grown man. If he says he's fine, he's fine. But like, he wasn't he fine. No, and like this is one in the morning. This guy's just and he's just been down there to Sheer and Open, uh, Sheer and the Open all the way back. Yeah, Did so that's, any good? <laughs> can't remember that one. Can't that was it? the one that that was English National. So that must have been Bath and West. Can't I remember, can we? I honestly can't remember. I think that was all these. Show- <clears throat> the other reason uh, doing them shows, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it was sensible, but it was a qualifying year for the world champs okay. in Scotland. So if I didn't, you know, that was game over for me. If I didn't compete in these qualifying mm-hmm. events, then and I was lucky enough that I managed to to qualify for the Scottish team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gavin, Gavin, much who should have been in the team, but uh, he couldn't do the whole circuit circumstances he's farming in New Zealand and he couldn't get over for the whole season so he had to rely on winning the Scottish National to make the team right but he had a bad day that day and Callum Callum won it and I was second and Callum was only point two or something in front of me that day mm-hmm. uh, I nearly that was the closest I'd been to him for a couple of years yeah, yeah, and that would have saved you a lot of running about if you'd Aye. won it, because then you could have recovered that year and come back stronger. Yeah, well, you had yeah. to keep pushing it to the limit. But uh, you know, that I probably tried harder that year than I did this year for the world champs. Mm-hmm. Just when you're so far down and you have to come back up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we should let's speak. I wish about, I had another year. Let's let's speak. We're like I, I, this could go on for ages, and we better wrap this up Aye. pretty soon but let's before we finish let's speak about the world champs mm-hmm. a little bit now didn't go to plan of course didn't go to plan yeah what we, and well you didn't win. didn't win who won Guion Evans a Welsh guy right cracking lo- young lad uh, my only claim to fame is he asked me what gear and that to use before that final and uh, he said he was going to, his wife was pregnant at the time and he came in that night after winning and he said he was going to, if it's a boy, I'm going to call it Hamish, he says. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
I don't know if did he ever did. did. <laughs> I don't know if it was a boy or a girl. No, actually. I don't know either. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, there we go. So uh, I don't really. Know many, I don't know really many Welsh Hamishes. I must say, no, I don't know many Welsh Hamishes. <laughs> he would probably get bullied a lot. I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not many Welsh Hamishes. A lot of Scottish ones these days, but so, so the Welsh the Welsh guys did really well. Uh, really well. The sheep suited them. Uh, and let's just talk about that now. And I know your worry is that if we talk about it, it's like saying they won because of the sheep, which isn't the case. No, definitely no, not. They were the best shearers in the day. The boys are class. They've won all around the world on all different types of sheep. It's not about that. But there has to be an element of a Scottish home world champs and we don't shear. Like, our strength as Scottish shearers is a black face. Like, it's our sheep. You don't get it anywhere else in the world. Some parts of England, of course. But it is a a special thing for us and Scottish people are generally the best at them generally speaking there's obviously anomalies to that why wasn't there blackies in the final pass we rec we asked why and so many different excuses uh, so then I had to me and Callum had to put it behind us and say right mm -hmm. we have to share uh, whatever they put in front of us don't understand why they didn't use home advantage and every other country was hoping for it. Is that but it played into their hands. Aye. They'd be delighted. Uh, you still had to get should through. Have, we should still have shown them. Well, it's we imp still it's, should have shown them. Yeah, it's important to say that it was Blackies in the semi. So you still had to get through the Blackies mm. to make the final. Okay. Like, there is still that element. Uh, but, you know, when you then have, you know, Callum was obviously in the final of the World Champs, our Scottish home favourite. Like, y you've got to tend towards Callum any day on Blackies against it. I'm being biased. I know I'm being biased, but Callum's bloody good. You're obviously good, but Callum was on form that day or that weekend. He's good on the blackies. Yes, definitely. No, uh, uh, taking nothing away from the Welsh guys. I'm, no, I'm uh, not doing that. And that's I, not what I'm saying I, at all. I, I, it I, sounds I'm, like I am, but I'd a lot. I, it's more having a go at whoever I, thought I'm it was really, a good idea. Yeah. I'm really uh, disappointed for Callum uh, because if, I'm pretty sure if it had been in blackies, you know, I wasn't in the final. Mm -hmm. uh, if it had been in Blackies, you know, it could have been a different world champion. Uh, if it takes 20 years, I was lucky enough, I saw in the last world champs in Scotland, so I got two kicks at trying to be a world champion in Scotland. The the the, the, the first one, uh, I won the six shows, I think it was, before the world champs, and then didn't make the final. Yeah. So just That's bad luck. But yeah. I got another chance. And uh, it was on Blackies. Sheep, I could say sheep didn't fall in my favour uh, with the pen of sheep that I got, so I didn't make the final. Other good guys didn't make that final either. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And, uh, I mean, there's not a single Southern Hemisphere shearer. No, but if Callum, if it had been on Blackies, I'm pretty sure it could have been, it could have been a different... and. Yeah, I don't understand it. Uh, I'm not going to even try and understand no, it. No, I think it's fair to say none of us did. I'm See a wee bit heard. disappointed yeah. for we, Callum. We couldn't believe it. We couldn't if, believe it. If Callum has to wait another 20 years before it's in Scotland, he'll be this bloody older than me, so he'll be mm -hmm. too old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a challenge, Callum. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> uh, and to be fair, yeah, it could easily be 20 years before it's back round this way. I suppose it was last time. So no, I just I thought we'd, we'd just touch on the sheep. But of course, like in one thing I will say, the Welsh boys are class. Like they're bloody good shearers. Mm -hmm. Richard Jones, and I say this all the time, Richard particularly, uh, I think he's one of those guys, if you're going to say it, somebody, go and look at somebody to shear, and then have a look at how Richard shears. Like, I always think just smooth, mm -hmm. pink, like nothing's hurried, does his own thing. He's, he's, he's very unique in the way he shears. Whereas, like, you know, a lot of you guys are, you especially, Hamish, and Guillaume very into it. Do you know what I mean? Callum's quite a, quite a bit different to his style. Yeah, no, um, no, it's dead right. But Gav, the Welsh, the Welsh have done the groundwork for the last ten years and built up a foundation of young shearers. <sighs> Amazing. And yeah. and they, we really need to look at them in Scottish shearing and be like, definitely, how do we get it like that? And English shearing too. English shearing down the ranks is shocking. Like, they don't have the strength and depth at all. We we have to do something. The Welsh have put a lot of money into it. Where they get that money, I do not know. But mm -hmm. uh, they've done development teams and and uh, Richard Jones was one of the first development teams that got sent to New Zealand. Guion was the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, so their development tests have produced Get two world champions now. Yeah. Gethin Lewis, 
he's he's now the champion shearer of Wales. He come up to the development thing. He's only twenty three. Yeah, he's a Welsh but there's, champion. There's there's been lots of them like that. When, when was that? Well, Callum, I suppose I was going to say, when was the last time somebody as young as that broke into the Scottish thing? But Callum Aye. has been the one. Yeah. But, but you and Gavin for 15 years before that? Aye, 20 well. years, maybe? Aye. So that we do, we need more strength. And these development teams, yeah. But we could go off on our tangent about that. Listen, we've kept you long enough. That has been, that's been good. Yeah. It's really good like. for me, especially. Like, and it'll be good for a lot of shearers who are listening, because a lot of shearers will listen to this. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will understand a lot of the names and the, the magnitude that's, been, you know, the the scale of how impressive those people are that you're you're talking about there. I own a lot of them would be over I your know, head. I feel like I want to go out and watch them on YouTube now. Yeah. I'm going well, I'm I'm to be home cool. Googling Hamish Mitchell. David, David Fagan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'll look up that. I'll try and find that Les Mahigo clip if I've got it somewhere and I'll put it on the end of the, or in, in the YouTube video. But Hamish, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming in. Thanks very much, Iona. Thank you. Can't wait. Some man. And that's us folks incredible interview there with hamish mitchell thanks again to hamish for coming down all the way to shorten to record that podcast looking forward to hearing your thoughts on it please do give us some feedback leave us a comment and if you'd like to watch the interview it is available on youtube just search fed by farmers podcast and if you're watching the youtube video you'll see some clips from the rod sutton world record and you'll also see the full scottish national final in 2022 featuring myself, bit of vanity, and uh, Hamish as well, and of course Callum Shaw, Gavin Much, and there's also a couple of guys called Archie and Stuart in that final too, so do check that out on the YouTube channel. If you're listening on the audio podcast, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll be back on Thursday with uh, some questions and answers. Get your questions in for us, folks. Make them challenging. Thanks for listening. See you for the next one. Okay. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Callum just getting the t-shirt off. We'll give him a wee second just to get his cell ready. Okay, boys, shearers on the boards, please. Timekeepers, judges, shearers, go. Archie Pass in one, Cammy Wilson in two, Gavin Mudge in three, Hamish Mitchell in four, Stuart Newison in five, and then maybe face Callum Shaw in six. Up the undermine, but Gavin Mudge, ladies and gentlemen, look at he's already off there, look at gun. He drops down on the long blows. He's making a cracking job, he steps over. This is our flew back to try and make this final. I want to be my name in that trophy. I want to represent Scotland again. But it's Gavin Mudge. Come on, Fox. Give him a big cheer. It's Gavin Mudge here. He's a current world champion. And he's shearing like it today as he pops the first sheet down the port hole and just over 30 seconds. 33 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Cammy Wilson is coming down the last side. Archie Patterson goes in. Hamish Mitchell goes in. Callum Shaw is in. Cammy Wilson goes in. Where's young Stuart? Davidson, he'll go in, but already the man on stand at number three, Gavin Much is driving that handpiece on the long blows, ladies and gentlemen, the sheep thought about kicking, she never had time to kick, he's turning, he's coming down the last side, round that last side comes, Gavin Much, ladies and gentlemen, he is scalping those blows. Into the pen goes Gavin Much in just over a minute and ten seconds. And there goes Callum Shaw, he's coming right behind him. This is a teammate from the Nationals before. He is coming behind him there, but look at that. Archie Patterson as well, he's coming along. But watch that big man, Hamish Mitchell, at stand number four. He's moving through them. But look at Gavin Much, he's coming up, breaking the neck open there. And there's Callum Shaw just behind him in the undermine. Watch these boys go here, but Gavin much going to set her down. There goes Cammy Wilson in for sheep number three. Keep the boards right there, Ryan. And now watch this here. There he goes, big Gavin Much. But Callum Shaw is not letting him go anywhere. He's on the long road. But Gavin Much says, no, no, I'm on the other side. I'm coming round the corner. But look at Hamish Mitchell. He's coming on as well. Watch him turn the corner with Callum Shaw. But there goes Gavin Much in stand three day. It just popped up. Sheep down the porthole, ladies and gentlemen. He skips into the pen. Sheep number four on the board for him. And goes the baby face assassin in six. And goes the like you in from Sky and four. Already pops the belly out. It's Gavin Much. Come on, folks, give them a cheer. This is your top six shearers in Scotland. One of these are going to represent the six here at the World Champs. It's Gavin Much. He's up the neck. He cleans the cheeks. Round the back of the face he goes. But look at the baby face assassin in six. Callum Shots coming right back up. Come on, folks. 
Gavin Mabachi, and goes Cammy Wilson in two. But it's Gavin Munch, Callum Shaw down the left side. Who's going to be the quickest down there? It's going to be Callum Shaw, Gavin Munch, Gavin Callum. These boys are sharing fast as I can talk, and I can talk right goddamn quick. And goes Callum, and goes Gavin. They're both current world champions, ladies and gentlemen, the teams, and they're sharing like a diddy. But Big Hamish is coming right back up the like he learned from Sky and four. Big don't know it, big arch up there in four. Sharing is stand number one. And goes Hamish in four. But look, here comes Gavin, he's up and then he cleans the cheek round the back and then he goes shoot. Yeah, but look out because he, Callum Shaw, is tight up his tail, ladies and gentlemen. Gavin Mutch steps over, Callum Shaw steps over, Hamish Mitchell's up the neck, Gavin's rocking and rolling down the last side. Callum Shaw is sliding in the slipstream. Gavin Mutch goes round the hind leg. Callum Shaw is round the hind leg. Into the pen goes Gavin Mutch. Into the pen goes Callum Shaw. And here comes Hamish Mitchell, ladies and gentlemen. Cammy Wilson sticking to him as well. But this is hot enough to be a hell of a final. This is flying on. Give these shooters a cheer for. Let's hear everyone here get them going. There goes Hamish Mitchell in stand four. He's coming with sheep six. But look at these two men in three and six. They're neck and neck. Callum Shaw and Gavin Much, they're setting them down. Oh, who's going to come round the corner first? But there goes Archie Parson and Stan One. They're flying on. But look at these two men, Callum Shaw and Gavin Much. The teammates from the Worlds are working neck and neck at the minute. But who's going to go first? Oh, Callum Shaw is just down the back leg. And Gavin Much is coming there with him. In goes Callum Shaw. In goes Gavin Much. This is going on now, Dai. Callum has brought an absolute skill part down there at stand number six. Up the undermine he goes. One more blow, he says, I'll make it easy. But Gavin says, I'm coming to get you. Callum, I'm up the neck, I'm cleaning the cheek, round the back of the head. But Callum, the baby face assassin, has already been there and done that. He steps over the back, but he goes, but the big lanky root from Sky, he's off there at stand number four. He's only about six boards behind him. Archie Parson is there in the chair that fell out there at stand number one. You've got Cammy Wilson in two. You've Stuart Davidson in five. But look at Gavin Much and Callum Shaw stand three and six together. And goes Callum there. Sheet number eight in the board, ladies and gentlemen. They've just hopped the five minute shoe. Yeah, so Gavin Much and Callum Shaw are still having a ding dong, ladies and gentlemen. Stuart Davidson is about to go in for sheet number seven. Hamish Mitchell about to go in for eight. Cammy Wilson down the last side of six. But already the men, the place to watch, ladies and gentlemen, is stand three and six because they're having a bit of a ding dong. Down into the long blows they go. Callum Shaw has stepped over. Gavin Much has stepped over. Callum Shaw is turning. Gavin Much is turning. They are sticking to each other like two gladiators. Down the last side comes Callum Shaw. Down the last side is Gavin Much. Into the pen goes Callum. Into the pen goes Gavin. But don't forget that man in stand for Amos Mitchell. Look at him go, folks. He's coming on behind them. But watch these other boys here. And stand one, Archie Parson. Stand two, Cammy Wilson. In goes Amos Mitchell there. He's chasing on behind these boys. But look at this. Callum Shaw up opens the neck. Gavin Much opens the neck. Who's going to come round? Who's going to set them down and step over first? Watch what they do here. But watch that man, Amos Mitchell, on stand four. He He's done the undermine, he's coming on, but look at these two on stand three and six. Gavin Much and Callum Shaw, who's going to get down last? Who's going to do it? They're coming round there. Watch that match, Jerry Davidson as well, he's throwing that neck out. There goes Callum Shaw, there goes Gavin Much, they're neck and neck now. Sheep number 10, the boys ladies and gentlemen, look at that time, these boys are just getting going now. Down the belly cut, but Gavin's already popped the belly up. Come on, folks, give them a cheer. The louder you cheer, the faster these boys will cheer. Gavin Mutch is up the neck. The big Hamish boy pops it down the porthole. He goes, Gareth, give me that sheep out of the road. He brings it out, he settles her down. But Gavin Mutch, he's got a cracking wee mule hog there. Long most time for him there. Over goes Big Arch up there to stand number one. Cammy Wilson, he's not for high running him there to stand number two. But it's Gavin Mutch. He says, Judge, go in my road. I'm scalping down the last side. But so is Callum Shaw up there in stand number six. We need a big strong hook to go behind him. And goes Gavin Mutch there in stand. Change of hand, peace, ladies and gentlemen. Just hit the halfway mark. 
So we've got 11 sheep in the board, Liam Gentle for seven and a half minutes. In goes Callum Shaw. It brings out an absolute skill for a beer belly. Can he take advantage of it, Hugh? Yeah, so Callum Shaw and Gavin Much are still fighting tooth and nail. Hamish Mitchell is still in the fight, ladies and gentlemen. So the rest of the field, because quality counts. Quality is king, but these guys are all quality shearers. Down the last side comes Gavin Much. He's starting to sweat, ladies and gentlemen. It's pouring off his brow. He's huffing and puffing down that last side, but he goes in for sheep number 12. Callum Shaw, two blows, one blow. He goes in for sheep number 12. Change of steel for Callum. Hamish Mitchell's coming round that shoulder. He is sliding away, but out comes Callum. He's got a very fast shearing sheep. Gavin matches into the long blows. Callum Shaw is into the hind leg, and they're still having a real scrap up there. And Hamish Mitchell there in stand four, he goes in for sheep number 12. But there's that man, Gavin Much in stand three. He's in a nice clean one there, and he's down the last side on sheep number 12. But there's Callum Shaw, he's got a nice clean one too, and he's saying, I'm coming for you, Gavin. Give them a shout, folks, come on, let's hear it. There, look at him now. There he goes, Gavin Much. But watch that man, Callum Shaw. He comes down that side there and he's flying. But look at him, it's Mitchell, folks. Watch him go and stand four. He's flying. But look at Callum Shaw. There's no stopping him. Watch these boys now. But there's Archie Parson in stand one. He's going for sheep 12. Change a hand piece there for Hamish. And he comes out with sheep 13. And they're not even. They're not even at the 10 minute mark yet, Dave. Look at Callum Shaw, he's got gone. Come on, folks, we're not the crucible we want here. Let's please raise the roof. This is a bit wrong for him. This is your Scottish national. Gavin Munch up there in stand number three. One more body pops up down the bottom. But look at Callum Shaw, the current current world champion with Hamish. Mitchell, he's turned the corner for him down the last side. And it comes Callum Shaw. Down the belly goes Canary Old Mike. Gavin Munch, come on, folks. Cheer him on. This is your Scottish national. The best one today is going to be representing your country next year at the World Champs here at the Royal Highland Show. Yeah, so Gavin Match is up the neck. But look out, ladies and gentlemen, because here comes Callum. Here comes Hamish. Look at Hamish Mitchell. He's in the groove, ladies and gentlemen. Long blow time for Gavin. First Callum, and now for Hamish. Gavin's got a kicker. Callum Shaw has stolen a blow. Hamish has got a kicker. He says, sit still, you tart. Round that shoulder comes Callum Shaw. Round that hind leg comes Callum, he goes in for sheep, number 13, 14. In goes Gavin Much, Hamish Mitchell. He'll be glad to see the back of her. But it's still the man on stand, number six. Callum Shaw flings the belly wool. Gavin Much flings the belly wool. They start to fling those undermine blows. One big blow either side the backbone. And up the neck and into the front shoulder they go. And Hamish Mitchell has got a peeler. Here they go, folks, now. You've got the three of them going. Gavin Much, Hamish Mitchell, Callum Shaw. Give them a shout. Come on, where are they? Here goes Hamish Mitchell. Look at that man go. He's coming along. Watch him go there now. He's flying. But Callum Shaw is right beside him. Who's going to go in the hole first? Will it be Callum? Will it be Hamish? Will it be Gavin? Here goes Hamish Mitchell. Give him a cheer. There we go. There goes Gavin Much. But there's a wee kick and a from Callum Shaw. There he goes. Sheep number 16. These are flying folks. Watch them go. But Callum Shaw has changed the handpiece up there in number six. He'll go over. But it's Mike Hamish Mitchell. He's an expert at I make sure the pain comes right. Up the neck he comes and cleans off the cheek. But Gavin Much is coming right back up, stand three and four. But so is Callum Shaw down in the six. He breaks off the right, cleans off the cheek. But Mike Hamish has already been there, done that. In goes Cammy Wilson in two. Finishing touchy for Archie Pass up there. But look at me, Stuart Davidson there at five, he's shearing as well. Gavin Munch says, just sit there, sweetheart, we're nearly finished. I'm turning the corner, but Meg Hamish Mitchell, come on, folks, give it to you. Sheep number 17, the ball, look at that time. So big bad Hamish Mitchell comes up with 17. 
Gavin Much has even got time to hitch his trousers up for 17. In goes Callum Shaw for 17. In goes Stuart Davidson for 16. Cammy Wilson about to drop onto the long blows of 14. Archie Patterson is on the long blows of 15. But look at the lanky loon from Sky. He's like a windmill in a hurricane, ladies and gentlemen. Look at him get to the turn. He's coming down the last side, round the shoulder. Round underneath the front leg. Gavin Much is coming. Callum Shaw is coming. But Hamish Mitchell is sticking to his work. As Hamish Mitchell goes in with sheep number 18. These shears are flying. Come on, folks. There goes Callum Shaw. He's got to grab. Get me that sheep now. There goes Gavin Much. These shears are going. There goes Hamish Mitchell on the under nine. He's going to throw that neck wheel out. Watch him go. But Callum Shaw, he's in an easy belly. He's coming up through. He's popped the neck wheel out. But Hamish Mitchell says, I've been there, done that. Watch me lift this up on his last side. Here they go. But watch, there's that man, Gavin Much. He's, don't forget about him in stand three. He's flying round the corner now. But Callum Shaw, he's not letting them go. Watch this man, Hamish Mitchell in for 19. Hamish Mitchell goes in with 19, ladies and gentlemen, one left in the pen, and he has got another little honey. Into the back leg goes Hamish. He'll hop, skip, and jump up the neck. Into the back leg goes Callum Shaw. Into the pen goes Gavin Much. Hamish Mitchell is on fire, ladies and gentlemen. He drops onto the long blows. He swings that big long leg over. He gets to the turn. He's coming down the last side. Callum Shaw is coming. This is going to be a close finish. Into the pen. Who's it going to be? It's going to be Hamish Callum. It's going to be close. It goes Hamish Mitchell for 20 die. Come on, folks. Gavin Much here to hold the big fella. And what the year he's came back from. Hamish Mitchell on the end of it. Callum Shaw's coming right back. Him stands four and six. Come on, folks. Keep it cheering. The light of you cheer. Who's your favourite? Come on, Callum. Come on, Hamish. Gavin Much here coming right back. Come on, there is stand number three. But Hamish Mitchell's turned the corner for him. Come on, folks. Jobs can Callum Shaw reel him back in. Callum, Hamish, Hamish, Callum. These men are like that big Hamish. You just got it. One bell has got that big Hamish Mitchell. And he goes Callum Shaw at six. Gavin Much. Fire on, walk the neck. He goes, he steps up the neck. He cleans up with you. Come on, folks. You're on Gavin Much. We're current world champion here. Up the neck. He goes, cleans up with you. But look at Archie Parsons, he made a cracking job up there to stand number one. Over goes Cammy Wilson there and two. We shoot it, Davidson. He's got sheet number 17 the board. And goes we shoot it there. Look at that time, ladies and gentlemen. But just had the 15 minutes and Gavin much about to pop her down the bottle. Up comes Archie Parsons there and one. He's up and he cleans off a jeep round the back of the head. Cammy Wilson says, How many boys done that if I get four men in my pen? And he goes Gavin much and stand number three. These shearers are flying, these shearers are still going, look at them there. There's Archie Patterson, he's on his last sheep. He's coming round for the last sheep now. Watch them go there with that young man, Stuart Davidson in stand five. He's coming round the corner of sheep 18. Watch these boys go here. That's Cammy Wilson, he comes round, lays her down gently. And there goes Archie Patterson, away in for his final sheep there. They're still going, but that's, they're not even at the 16 minute mark yet, folks, and look at them go. There goes Stuart Davidson in for sheep 19. Keep and these shearers on, folks. These are the finest. Look at them go here now. Archie Parson sits down his 20th and final sheep. Watch them go there now. The wheels fly and the papers fly. We don't know what's going on. Then there's Cammy Wilson comes round the corner now. He's finished up and goes on to sheep 18. Then there's Archie Parson. Give him a cheer, folks. He's coming down his last side. Look at him go there. He's flying. Then there's there we go, it's Stuart to Davidson. He's on sheep 19, he's coming round the corner. There we go, Archie. But watch them go here now. There's Cammy Wilson coming down that side. He's on sheep 19. They're flying round the corner. Who's going to get there next? Who's going to drop these sheep quick? There goes Stuart Davidson. But Cammy Wilson's right behind him. He's coming down that last side on sheep 19. Stuart is grabbing sheep 20 there. He's got, a nice, oh, he's got an easy belly there and he's coming in up the backside. 
But watch that man, Cammy Wells, in the sheep game there. He's went for sheep number 20. These shearers are coming against each other now. Watch Cammy go here. Bear Stuart D. Davidson. He's going to lay her down nicely. Come on to those big, long blows there up the backbone. Watch him go. Sweep, sweep, and round the side. But look at Cammy Wilson. Come on, this is getting close, folks. Keep them going. Cammy's coming round the corner. He's going to come down that last rib. Look at him fly along there now. Come on. Who's going to do it? There's Stuart Davidson. And there's Cammy Wilson, folks. There's your final. Let's hear a big round of applause for Archie Parks and Cammy Wilson, Gavin Mudge, Damien Mitchell, Stuart Davidson, and Callum Shaw. We're going straight to a prize given, boys. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. 17 minutes for 120 hogs. Unbelievable, Bruce. We'll be going straight to a prize given.